Okay. But so we're talking about the vocabulary in Unit 3. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is three little words that are important for purpose clauses. Okay? Um, they're the word hina, the word hapos, and the word hos. All of them are listed as conjunctions in, in the vocabulary. Um, and when they have a subjunctive or an optative after them, they mean in order that. Okay? Not in order to, but in order that. Okay. okay, because you have to put in a sentence after them. In order that, we might buy a bag of peanuts. Okay? Um, so how do you pick between them is a really interesting question. And there is no answer. <laughs> some authors use one, some authors use the, use the other. Um, it's very rare that they switch back and forth between them. So it's like uh, speech habits that people have. These words, all of these, three of these words can mean something else if they don't have a modal verb after them, okay? So they have to have a subjunctive or an optative to mean in order that. Um, that's important. All right. Let's also now look at the verbs that are in the vocabulary. There are one, two, three, four new verbs. There's the verb grafo, which not surprisingly means write or draw. Draw is surprising. It actually means paint um, as well as write, and means paint in the way that ancient Greeks painted vase paintings, which is filling in spaces. It's like when, you, when you're a little kid and, and you did coloring books. It's that kind of painting. Okay? Um, there's the verb thuo, okay, which means to sacrifice. Um, this is a big deal in this culture, um, and um, the theoretically anyway, or ideally, or another way of putting it is notionally, sacrifice is always of cattle, okay? And that's the primordial animal to sacrifice. Um, if you've ever been to Greece, you know it's not a place with uh, big ranches and <laughs> Lots of flat, grassy plains. There's one place in Greece that has grassy plains. So it's an inherited thing, the idea that, that cattle are to be sacrificed. Those of you who, who have been to India know that in India, there are all these cattle wandering around because you can't sacrifice them, right? Maybe you know that Greeks and, and, and uh, the Hindu peoples go back to a common ancestry, and there is a split, okay, because the reason that you you do things like we're not ever going to touch our cattle is because you've taken a, um, a point of view different from the people in your society who did did sacrifice cows mm -hmm. okay um, anyhow uh, ancient Greece inherited the cow sacrificing thing um, and so the literature talks about sacrificing cows there are are, are the Greeks made a huge effort to sacrifice cows, you talk about sacrificing a hundred cows at a time, and there were there were moments in the city of Athens where people did this, and they ate so much meat that they went nuts because they didn't eat meat during the rest of the year. <laughs> it does funny things to your body and mind, anyhow. Uh, um, but but uh, it, there are also you know so you have representations and and visual representations as well as literary ones of people sacrificing cattle, and we know that. There are places in the in sacred spaces where there are so many, the blood of cattle is built up so much from so many sacrifices that it is as high as a human being. Mm -hmm. You want to dry. But anyhow, uh, um, it's not the norm. And every once in a while you see somebody sacrificing a tuna fish in a vase. Okay, <laughs> that's a lot easier to get in Greece than a, uh, um, or it used to be. Okay, actually there are still tuna in the Mediterranean. I've actually seen someone uh, catch, catch one. And, Big, big ones, but they're rare. Anyhow, um, so the Greeks also talk about sacrificing pigs and sacrificing goats and uh, other animals that are much easier to raise in the in the um, eco uh, space ecosystem of ancient Greece than cattle. Um, but it's an important thing, and the principal parts of the verbs. We're going to take a look at them in a second. I just wanted you to notice that that the there's a noun derived from the verb thuo, which gives the, the vocabulary gives you, which is thusia, um, and it translates it as sacri sacrifice. Okay, but what it, it what happens is that it's the, really the word for festival, and uh, um, 
and this is a huge part of Greek life. In, in uh, any Greek city states, yeah, more days that are holidays, in other words, days in which festivals happen than, than not. And, and there, there are places where we, where we know about when festivals happen, for example, in Athens and other Greek city states, there are places where we don't. There are places where we actually, uh, you can see that we have a, a ritual calendar from one sort of remote place in Attica called Marathon. Maybe you've heard of Marathon, where the, Mar the rich first marathon was run from, okay? And, you know, it's like every single day there's almost something going to some god or goddess that you never heard of <laughs> happening, okay? So this is a big part of real life, and the, and the centerpiece of a festival is a sacrifice of one, some kind. So that's why the word for sacrifice means a festival, okay? So you should add that to the, to the meaning of the word. Um, the, the third verb in the lesson is pow o, which means make something stop or stop, okay? When we think of stop, um, we think of standing still, okay? But stopping can also be a verb that takes a direct object, as in stop someone from leaving, okay? And that's the fundamental meaning of this Greek verb, pow o. We have an English word derived from this. It's really e easy, it makes it easy to remember. That's the word pause, okay? Which means, after all, stopping, right? Um, and the last one is fulato, with two t's, okay? This is another weirdness of the Attic dialect. Fulato is the Attic form. Fulasso, with two S's where there are the two T's, is the standard Greek form. Okay, This word means uh, guard. It comes from a noun, phylox, that means guard. Um, we have it in English, that word for condoms, prophylactics. But also phylacteries, for those of you who know about Orthodox Jews and the equipment that they wear to protect themselves, their ritual objects. Anyhow, uh, um, so uh, let's look at the principal parts of these verbs. When we're talking about thuo, okay, and pao, we're looking at verbs that begin with a consonant and, um, and that end, whose stem ends with a vowel. In one case, the u of uh, all by itself, in the other case, the u diphthong. So with thuo, um, look what happens when you reduplicate it. Let's just talk about this since this is what this lesson is about. You don't get the thu or te. What originally was te, tu, okay? Um, because there's a sound rule in ancient Greek, which actually goes back to Indo-European, that you can't begin successive syllables in a word with an aspirated consonant. So what happens is, and, and, and I put it in a way that implies that you might have fetu or tethu, but it's got to be one or the other. We don't know which one necessarily, okay? So so that's what happens there. When it comes to pao o, the perfect formation is what you would expect, that is pepao. Um, if you look at the other principal parts of forms that you know, like thuso, ethusa, um, then they're all regular. They're just like luo, and the same is true of pao o. Pao o, pao so, e pao sa, pe pao ka. Those are the ones that we know. Um, and uh, But let's look at the other two verbs, that is grafo and fulato, which are words that begin with consonants but end with, their stem ends with a consonant, okay? So in terms of perfect, we talked in class yesterday about how you make the perfect of grafo. You, you'd reduplicate it, so you get gegraf, and then that's it. You add the alpha, okay? You don't have a cap after a consonant, okay? You don't have gegrafka. You have gegrafa, okay? And you can't aspirate it because it's already aspirated. So the perfect of grafo is gegrafa, gegrafas, gegrafa, and so forth. The perfect of fulato, well, that's another one that begins with an aspirated consonant. So the the perfect of fulato is going to be pe fulat fulak. Well, what the underlying the underlying consonant there is a kappa or a gamma, and it gets aspirated into a chi. Mm -hmm. So it's pe flacha. Okay, you can see the kappa in prophylactic. Okay, <laughs> um, it's not prophylactic. <laughs> Right. Um, the, the, the 
that's that's important because that explains why you have the future as fulaxo. That's a kappa with an s, and f fulaxa in the aorist. Okay, and you can see it in the other two principal parts. Um, so we've got principal parts here. Okay, um, it's time to learn them. Okay, um, and and uh, even the book recommends that you learn principal parts that you don't even know what the heck they are. Okay. I think it's kind of stupid, but it, it doesn't hurt, okay? So start memorizing principal parts of verbs. Most of them are going to be like pow o, okay? But you're going to need to work on things like grafo and filato, and they fall into patterns after a while. So if you memorize a few of them, everything will start to fit into place easily. But, but practice your memorizing skills on them. All right, um, otherwise, in this lesson, there are a couple of other uh, things to watch out for. One is the post-positive particle, the, okay, which is given to you right after a grapho. That's just the lengthened form of de. You know de, that means and or but, and de is a particle, not a conjunction, okay? There's also an equivalent. There's of for men. We, we talked about men and de, so we, corresponding to men and de, you have not conjunctions but particles man with an eta and de with an eta okay and um, we'll we'll talk about it the book says that de means in fact or of course um, we can say more about it it's a kind of evidentiary thing it means check it out okay you can the evidence is there okay you can see it for yourself okay um, that's that's more uh, than you learn from most books about day already. I think the other words in this lesson are pretty good. They're, they're things that you will recognize. Um, one other thing to um, add in terms of vocabulary is the first word, which is translated athlon, where we get athletics from, okay? Um, and it translates it prize. Okay, that's again half of the picture. Uh, the original meaning of athlon is a struggle or an ordeal, I think is an even better way of talking about it. It means a ritual ordeal. And what do you get if you if you make it through a struggle or an ordeal in a ritual context? You get a, some kind of a compensation, and that's what a prize means. So that's why this word gives us athletics. It's not because athletics are about prizes. <laughs> okay, it's about the effort involved or the struggle. Um, there's demos, the word for the people uh, in a political sense, and demo, as well as a legal sense, and demokratia, which means the democracy, the kind of government that you have in Athens, in ancient Athens. Um, there's ophthalmos, the word for I, which gives us ophthalmology. Uh, there are a handful of things there here, other things here that you'll recognize. There's a conjunction ape that means when, and the conjunction ala that means but. These are common words in the language. And then there is the word for the sneaker company, Nike, Nike, which gives us uh, Nike sneakers. Nike means victory in Greek. Um, we'll learn more about its roots. We also have um, a new preposition, or two of them, dia, okay? Um, dia with the genitive means through, in other words, by means of, okay, it's really, you did something through, uh, uh, you accomplished something through effort, okay, that kind of through. Um, and, um, and dia with the accusative means because of or on account of, very different ideas, well, maybe not that different if you think about it. Um, we also get berri, which this is this is annoying. Okay, but if you look at the book, they're kind of waving their hands about the fact that it takes genitives, dative, and accusative objects, and it means the same thing with all three, which is around or about. Okay, mean can mean physically around, um, or or the concept of about, which is which is uh, concerning something. Okay, which is like. Uh, the, derived from the notion of being physically around, all around something, mm. right? Um, but we have no no real way of distinguishing the meanings of it with the three uh, cases. That's that's the reality. Uh, at least I'm telling you the truth. 
and I can explain more about it, but maybe we'll do that some other time. Okay.